Page two looks good. Mr. Strollo or anybody just pipe up if you see something you don't like. Uh, pay, what? I don't know about all that. Plus, I'm still going off the February 7 version. All right, hold on, Judge. Unless they. And I have February 2nd, Judge. And February 7th was the last version until I just opened it. Now it's 211. It's got the version I'm working on now. Forty-two pages. Well, I've done a little bit of cleaning up. I mean, so I can email it to Mary. You can print it out, Your Honor, if you'd like to print it out. Okay, let's let's print out. Where's it going to print to? Miriam. Oh, okay. Yeah, email it to Miriam. We'll print it out. We'll get. Uh, I don't care. Print print the most recent one I'd suggest. While we're waiting for it to print out, have you decided on attempted voluntary manslaughter? Judge, I was just reviewing that from lockdown. Okay. The only thing that concerned me, Judge, there was a line that said it's not loaded. The very last sentence it says, this instruction is set forth in the appendix shall be effective when the machine becomes final. I don't know. I know it just came out, but it wasn't just final. Yeah. I think you have to look on the Florida Supreme Court.org website. Um, but, but then when the footnote said if you go to the website, there's going to be some discrepancy. That's one of the footnotes at the bottom. Or part of that footnote number two. So if you recognize that there may be minor discrepancies Ms. Corey, you want a hard copy of this instruction? No, sir. Thank you. Two. Um, I've got a simpler thing to do as well. Okay. Do you want me to make a few suggestions to start cleaning those up? Cleaning what up? Mary, how many orders do I owe you? Okay, how many Judge, orders do I owe you? Um, a couple of minor things. The information, the indictment, which is our standard language in our segment, says death or great bodily harm of Florida Davis. I can either include great bodily harm in everywhere it needs to go in the instructions and the verdict form, or Mr. Strollo could agree to delete it because we proved death. But that, I'll leave that up to you.
strike those from any reference in the, that doesn't have to comport with the indictment because manslaughter can necessarily less included. So I, I'm asking if on every sub-finding for manslaughter and attempted manslaughter, that the state only has to say he carried, displayed, or used a firearm. And the need to threaten to use or attempt to use. Is that okay, Mr. Strobel? Hang on, Mr. Stroll. We got a new copy coming for you. So we'll start from the top. Page number one. Any any objection? Mr. Stroll. No, you're wrong. Page number two. Five. No objection, Your Honor. Page number three. We agree. No objection. All right. Page number four. And just for the record, Judge, I know originally we objected to lesser included. So you, you when I say I agree, it would still be the, the objection to the lesser included. Right. M Mr. Dunn, as well as counsel, submit to the court. Based on our prior arguments on the record, it should just be murder in the first degree, what was indicted, and that's it. We do understand that Your Honor already denied it, so we're not disputing that with the court. Just okay. for I don't know for the appellate purposes, I have to object every time we do go through the charge. I understand. <laughs> so. You understand, though, it's second and manslaughter are the lessers there. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let me see this real quick. Go to page. That's okay. No, where's page Page one? five. Sorry, Judge. I'm still on four, Judge. I apologize. Okay. By the way, they didn't want to film this? It's uh, we're live right now. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm the crew. Okay. Well, but that's what, that was what you had going on this morning. It's exactly what we're doing right now. I understand, but apparently, from what I've read very quickly on the filing with the DCA, somebody came to the back door, front door, whatever you want to call it, asked to come in, and they were told they couldn't by a bailiff. Okay, then can we document that on the record, Judge? 
Sure. It, it's not fed over to 407. And they could hear and see us this morning, but somebody just wouldn't let them come in the room for some reason. I don't know nothing about that until you just said it, and it was recorded and everything this morning, so. I don't, I don't know. Yes, sir. We're the same time on page five. I'm, I'm still looking at four, Judge. Judge, my only concern with four is that justifiable, justifiable homicide is going to be different from our justifiable use of deadly force. It's a standard instruction. No, I know. I just, I, I'm, I'm looking at it now. one on four only talks about a dwelling which wasn't part of this so the one in my justified use of deadly force that we submitted talks about the occupied vehicle with the case law so that's my concern judge well that's in a different place no no i understand that but but again one says justifiable homicide well understood you need to probably have your microphone on This isn't justifiable use of deadly force, it's justifiable homicide, right. which is the akin to excusable homicide. It's not covered, but it's separate and apart from justifiable use of deadly force. I'm just putting, it's just going to be, most of these instructions will be confusing for the jury, considering all everything that just came Other up. than it might be confusing any objection, Mr. Stroh. No, you're wrong. Okay, page five. State is fine. Can we no turn this down? Is this loud or is it? Yeah, it needs to be turned down. Page five or six, Your Honor. I was finished with five. I was waiting on you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I said no objection. I apologize. Okay. Page six. State's fine. No objection, Your Honor. Page seven. Um, the only thing I'd bring up on page 7 to comport with the verdict forms is special findings for this count um, are death of Jordan Davis, which we've all agreed to now to take out great bodily harm, discharge, actual possession. And on the verdict form, it says that he committed murder but did not cause death, discharge, or what. A lot of judges want that in. That's where that language came from. It's a fourth finding. However, that language is not in the jury instruction. Well, first off, are you okay with the part that's highlighted in gray where it just says, uh, caused the death of Jordan Davis and took out the great bodily harm part? No, no objection to that, Your Honor. Okay. okay. So then, um, You want me to restate it, Judge? What do you mean? We would either need to add one more instruction after the third paragraph to comport with the verdict form or take that third finding out of the verdict form. Because basically, if they check, we find the defendant guilty of whatever the crime is, murder, then that, and they don't check a sub-finding, then it would just be murder and 1020 life wouldn't apply. I think some judges added the fourth sub-finding on the verdict form to make sure they understood they had to check one of the above. You're talking about we 
find that the defendant did not actually possess or discharge a firearm during the commission of the offense. Right. You would have to add all the, so it would have to say we, we the jury find the defendant did not cause death, discharge, or actually possess a firearm during the commission of the crime. I, I, well, hang on. I'm looking, have you changed the verdict form? Because in the, my, the verdict form that I'm looking at, the first sub-finding is discharge the firearm causing the death or great bodily harm. Right. No, I haven't changed them yet. I have not taken out great bodily harm yet. All right. Well, first off on that, are you okay with taking great bodily harm out of there? Or great bodily harm? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So that comports with the jury instruction. Then the second one is discharge the firearm. That comports with number two. The third one is possess the firearm. And, and well, I'm not sure it's supposed to say and did not discharge it. These came from another circuit judge as a suggestion to clarify it for the jury. I will defer to the court on it. I think, to me, the the the. Uh, You know, I've never really had that brought up. I've never, I've always put the four sub-findings in, and I've never put the fourth sub-finding in the jury instructions. I, I know. I just want to make sure they match. I just did, I did the verdict form a little more detailed so it was clearer to the jury that they had to make all these little findings, but I didn't read, I didn't read it to them. I thought it was self-explanatory. Well, Judge, I think under one, if you look at, the sub-finding under A, it gives clear direction. If you find the defendant guilty of this offense, you must choose one of the following findings. And my suggestion would be it, the first is we find the defendant discharged a firearm causing death during the commission of the offense. We find the defendant discharged a firearm during the offense. We find that the defendant actually possessed a firearm during the commission of the offense. And that would be it. I, I agree. Even though the jury, well, are you talking about in the instruction or on the verdict form? On the verdict forms. Because then it comports with the jury instructions and it comports with the law. I don't think you need the fourth finding because you've already told them that only if they choose number one, we the jury find the defendant guilty, then they must choose one of the following findings. Well... And then again, maybe that's why they give them that option is for them to find him guilty of murder and say to the court that yeah. they finding. No, I like number four in there. Okay. So then we would have to say we find that the defendant did not actually discharge a firearm causing death, discharge a firearm, or actually possess a firearm to, to keep it all going in the right way. Do you see what she's saying, Mr. Strola? And do you want it that way? In terms of the third paragraph and then the fourth subsection, Judge? Yes. I think you have to put that in. If we have number four, we find that the defendant did not actually possess or discharge a firearm during the commission of the offense. All right. You want me to reread this, Judge, the fourth finding now to comport with the first three? Uh, well, the third one would be if you find that he committed murder in the first degree and you also find beyond a reasonable doubt that during the commission of the crime he actually possessed a firearm but did not discharge the firearm, you should find him guilty of murder in the first degree with actual possession of a firearm. But I'm just not sure where that extra language came from. I know it's in the instructions, too. Um, 
see, the sub findings aren't really spelled out well in the instructions because there's so many options. Let well, me, what let are you me. saying? Leave paragraph three just the way it is? I'm talking about in the instruction itself, not on the verdict form. I, quite frankly, I thought it was easy. In my mind, it would be easier to agree on the verdict form for you to say how you want it read to the jury, and then I can fix the instructions if you want. Well, that's what I was just doing. All right, let me go to the sub findings, or maybe could um, Miss Marie go to the sub findings and the actual Maria go to them in the actual Florida Supreme Court? We could come back to that. Skipping page seven, going to page eight. Mr. Strolley. No objection to the form, just obviously our standing objection, including the lesser objection. Um, Judge, I do see one little thing. I think it should read. There may be evidence that he committed other acts that would constitute lesser included crimes. Does that make more sense yes, to read it that way? Yes, not a lesser included. So take out A and add an F after crime. Thank you. That's corrected. Okay. Page 8. Stay fine with that. You say eight or nine, Your Honor? Eight. And that was the one that's saying constitute lesser included crimes? No. Oh, that's the Second degree murder. Okay. I'm sorry. You're correct. It is nine. Okay, sorry, Judge. Pardon me. Okay. I was on to nine. No objection to the form, just the inclusion, Judge. Okay, moving on to page 10, we've got the same issues as first degree murder with the sub findings. We'll skip that for now and come back. Yes, sir. And that was on page 10 again, Your Honor? No, it's page, yes, page 10. So now we're on to 11. I thought we were going to try and get negligence, justifiable homicide, and excusable in the middle. Mine's printed out off to the left. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did want them over to the left. I thought you wanted the titles over the left. You want them back all the way in the middle? Yeah. My fault. The, the, the first sets are all in the middle. They were, but then I thought you said they would, because they don't all match up, they no, don't No, I wanted the first left letter to line up. Oh. Ooh. I have to figure that I out. I want the N and the J and the E to be somewhere in the middle of the page or, you know, a little, little but left. But you want those three to line up. Yeah. Okay, I think I can do that. Hold on. I'll use tabs instead of a justification. Can I come show it to you real quick? Well, you can email. Well, yeah, I'll just, just, I'm going to submit these. Uh, as soon, so we're, I think I've got it, what you want, Judge, where manslaughter's here and then negligence falls in the same place, justifiable homicide and excusable. Is that right. what you wanted? Yes. That's what I've got. Mr. Stroll, is the instruction itself okay on page 11? My only concern is looking at the new, the attempted one, Judge. That's what it says, no. I, on number two, Your Honor, it would say intentionally committed an act or acts that caused the death of Jordan Davis, but on the attempted manslaughter, it looks like they have committed an act which resulted in the death. I, I know, but they didn't change that. They, no. Yeah, they haven't touched the manslaughter. No, I know. That's, again, just because of the way it reads and talks about error, Your Honor. And, of course, the judge in that paragraph, they say in order to convict of manslaughter by act. I mean, that language is in here. Where? Right on page, um, is that 11? What's the one on the right where the second and third findings are? In order to convict of manslaughter by act, it is not necessary for the state to prove that the defendant had an intent to cause death. So those words were already included in the standard manslaughter instruction. 
I'm not seeing where you are. Page 12, I'm sorry. It's number two at the top. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. see that paragraph? Yes. All right. And then the only other thing when Mr. Strola decides on that is we need to decide if we're just going to say he used a firearm, which would simplify everything. Well, any objection to page 11, Mr. Strola? None, Your Honor. All right, on to page 12. It's that paragraph, if you find that Michael David Dunn committed manslaughter and you also find beyond a reasonable doubt that during the commission of the crime he carried, displayed, used, threatened to use, or attempted to use. What are you, you're proposing what? Take that out. Take out everything but use. That was Mr. Strolla's suggestion to avoid confusion. So you're saying you should say carried, displayed, or no. used. No, just say, that's what I thought. And then Mr. Stroll says, I have display, displayed or carried. Just say, during the commission of the crime, he used a firearm. You find him guilty of manslaughter with a firearm. Three classification language, and it's actually very clean. And then the last paragraph would have to say the same thing, but did not use a firearm. Mr. Stroll. Yes, Stroll. What's your, what's your pleasure there? Well, we agree with threatened to use or attempted to use to come out, Your Honor. Okay. okay. You want to just leave it carried, displayed, and it would have to be or used? And that would go... <clears throat> What page would do we go back when we first talked about striking that? Do you recall, Ms. Corey? No, this is it. It only comes up under manslaughter and attempted manslaughter because it's reclassification language, not 1020 life language. And it doesn't have to track the indictment because lesser includeds aren't in the indictment. So it's, it's strictly your call or the court's call based on the evidence that's been put in. And Judge, I would also make it consistent. Instead of using past tense in that first paragraph, I think we should keep it consistent and say he did carry, display, or use, or just he did use a firearm and keep it consistent because it's in past tense in the first paragraph and present tense in the... I'm lost on that one, Judge. Okay, here, here's my suggestion. <laughs> Let me just read the two paragraphs. My suggestion is we say, if you find that Michael David Dunn committed manslaughter and you also find beyond a reasonable doubt that during the commission of the crime he used. did use a firearm, you should find him guilty of manslaughter with a firearm. In other words, say did use instead of the past tense of used so that when you give the did no, not, it's I'm not, consistent. I'm not doing that. Oh, okay. You don't want to do that? No. Okay. So then all I need to know You want to leave carried, displayed, and you, or used in there, Mr. Strolla? No, because I think if we went back, Judge, we Then how do you want it to read? Just to say that during the commission... How do you want it to read? That's done. Just to use, Judge. The commission of a crime, he used a firearm. During the commission of a crime, he used. A firearm. Okay. Yeah. Dropping down to the last paragraph. Yes, sir. You want to say, did not use? And take out carry and display? So it's consistent? Yeah, that's where it's tough, Judge.
You know, if we can be consistent, we just say did not use a firearm. Yeah, Judge, uh, could you keep it cleaner okay. and consistent? You got that, Ms. Corey? Yes, I did, Judge. Page 13. I found another reference to attempted voluntary manslaughter in the second paragraph, so I've just highlighted it for now until we make a decision. Where? Attempted murder in the first degree includes lesser crimes. It's just in paragraph form. Yeah, I see it. So I've just highlighted it until you tell me what to do. What are we going to call this thing, Mr. Stroller? We need to know. Which We've been one? talking about it for days. Attempted voluntary manslaughter or manslaughter by act? Or excuse me, attempted manslaughter. Oh, by Judge, act. I, I apologize. I thought we were on page 13. We, we are. are. Oh, okay. That's where the first reference to it <clears throat> all comes up. You've already got a reference in a prior instruction where they call it... Voluntary manslaughter by act? Yes. Or... Manslaughter by act. They call it judge. manslaughter by right. act. Yes, sir. And judge, for the record, I'm on the Florida Supreme Court.org website, and 6.6 .6 still reads attempted voluntary manslaughter, so I can't tell the court any more than what's there. Maria, anything else? Same? Yes. Make a call, Mr. Stroller. You know, I looked at that picture there in the back. It looks like you. It looked almost identical to me. It does. Except for the glasses. It does. Huh? I heard that today. My mother was you. You're... Who did? Uh, one of the people in your <laughs> That's uncanny. I mean, it I've is. Been, been mistaken for him, but anyway. You're a lot more fun. I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> I looked at that and I thought, golly day, man. I guess this is it for me. Because <laughs> all these guys up here are either passed away or retired. But man, they really are trying to send me a message. Oh, Lord, they really are. Anyway, Mr. Strola. Yes, sir, Your Honor. What do you want to call it? I think to stick with the, the original 6.6 .6 attempted voluntary manslaughter. You got it. Okay. So that means we can leave page 13 just like it is. Yes, sir. Anything else about 13, Mr. Strola? One second, Your Honor. Can we go back to something here? Hold on. Justifiable homicide. Can we take out any dwelling house? Sir? The justifiable homicide. Uh, it's the it says, or to commit a felony in any dwelling house. 
hold on, Judge. I mean, the bottom of 13, Your Honor. Well, then we got to go back to other places because it says it in all of them. Right. I mean, I'll leave it in there if you want. Because it does say, I mean, it's a standard instruction. It does say the attempt to commit, the attempt to murder or commit a felony upon the defendant or to commit a felony in any dwelling house. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think it's confusing. Okay. All right. So we okay on 13? Judge, I know, I know it's standard language, but on count two, three, and four, it says Tevin Thompson or another person. Count three, Leland Brunson or another person. I think it's confusing to put in there or another person. Everyone that's been accused of as, as an alleged victim is in the indictment. But that other person could be Jordan Davis, so that's why it's alleged that way in the indictment. But Jordan. And oddly enough, count two, Tevin Thompson or another person, the other person could only be theoretically there. could be Leland Brunson. It could be. And that's count three. <laughs> and then count three is Leland Brunson, and the other person could be Tommy Storms. And that, that's my it's, concern. It's kind of crazy, but... That, that's why I would, I would ask that it would just say count two, Tevin Thompson, count three, Leland Brunson, count four, Tommy Storms. I don't think other person could be Jordan Davis because it wouldn't be attempted murder. Jordan Davis is deceased. So another person clearly couldn't be Jordan Davis. So my point is every single person was listed in the indictment. Every single person has their own instruction. Okay. I think or another, I would ask that that be stricken, Your Honor. May I be heard? Yes. We had shots fired specifically at different portions of the car, and we're entitled to say that those shots were designed for one person or another, which is why we alleged it that way in the indictment. Also, we never addressed transferred intent, and I'm, I don't, I'm trying to figure out right now if we need to ask for it, but... Um, that his intent applies no matter who was in that car because he was intending to kill. So he was intending to kill either Jordan Davis. Well, he did kill Jordan Davis. That's why you can't use it, that language there. But with the rest of the shots, he was attempting to kill either one of those young men or another person. And it applies, like you said, if it's Th Tevin Thompson, then the other one could be Leland Brunson or Tommy Storms or Jordan Davis because he was still firing. At the time he fired these shots, he didn't know Jordan Davis was dead. So it's not like he completed the act of murder and then went on to shoot at other people. I'll leave it the way it is. Other than that, anything? One Maybe. second, Your Honor. I'm just making a note. on counts one does it talk about justifiable use of deadly force because we've got in that right under count two three and four it talks about was excusable or resulted from justifiable use of deadly force and i'm not if i can just go back one minute your honor I think somewhere in count one, I think we have to have that paragraph. Did I miss it? You notice how judge on count two, it talks about introduction to attempted homicide, but then mentions or whether the attempted killing was excusable or resulted from the justifiable use of deadly force. <clears throat> right, you're talking about... So they have the language standard in attempted murder for counts two, three, and four, but that paragraph doesn't exist for count one, and clearly that's a defense we're raising for count one. Wait a minute. You see how that, if on page 13, Your Honor, okay. right below count two, count three, count four, where we just talked about Tevin Thompson, Lee LeBron, and Tommy Storms. Right. It says you will then consider the circumstances surrounding the attempted killing and decide if it was attempted first degree murder, attempted second, or attempted volunteer manslaughter. Mm -hmm. 
or whether the attempted killing was excusable or resulted from justifiable use of deadly force. That paragraph is nowhere in the instructions for count one of the indictment with Jordan Davis. It's in the introduction, isn't it? Yeah. Did I miss it? That's where I was looking. It's in that that paragraph comes under introduction to homicide and introduction to attempted homicide. Look at page four. That okay. That's where I was just making sure, Judge. Okay. Um, and while we're up there, if the court will indulge me, we are requesting transferred intent. So it would be the short paragraph from the standard on page six at the bottom. Transferred intent is part. Uh, Judge, we would only object to that. I'm sorry, you what? Objecting to add transferred intent of page six. Is that what I just heard? Mm -hmm. Judge, if I can go back to page four for one moment. Back to page four. Oh, the, okay. I see it now, Your Honor. I apologize. I'm, I was looking at originally just justifiable homicide, excusable homicide. But right before, above that says justifiable use of deadly force. Let me just see if that tracks, Your Honor, one second. Okay. It does track, Your Honor. find this transferred intent it's on um, it's in the part of the standard jury instructions judge it's the last paragraph transferred intent give if applicable um, under 7.2 murder in first degree Basically, one sentence we're asking to add. I know that on a different page. I think I just had it. I'm going to have to see if it's an attempted. I have it on there already. I just had it up earlier. Are you sure you want that? Well, here's part of the problem. I checked with co counsel and he said yes, but I'd need a couple of minutes to check with him. You want me to highlight it and come back to you on it? Yeah, because I, I, I mean, I, the testimony is that the shooting was at Jordan Davis. No, no, That's who got killed. Yes, sir. No, no. There was never any, no, no, okay. in my way of looking at it. I'd, that's why there's I didn't no put it in transfer there. intent. That's why I didn't put it in there to begin with. But let me, I've got it highlighted, so I'll get back to it, Judge. Well, I'll make it easier for you to the extent you've asked for it. Yes, you, sir. Uh, what are you saying about that, Mr. Strollo? We, we object, John. Then your objection is sustained. It's out. It's out. Thank you, Judge. There you go. That is So we were at page 13. Yes, Judge. We're good there. Now yes, we're Your Honor. moving on to 14. Other than my objection of the or another person. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 14. No objection to 14. Years. 15. Any objection other than all the other persons?
No objection to 15, Judge. And I think it's standard that says except that someone prevented or he failed to do so. I'm sorry? So 15 and 16? At the very bottom of 15, it says except that someone prevented Michael David Dunn from killing count two, three, and four. He failed to do so. Yeah. I think we put it, well, I know it's standard, but I, when you, once you put the except that someone prevented, I don't want to confuse the jury thinking that has to be proven that someone tried to prevent it, but then it does say, or he failed to do so on the next page. You want me to pull it up on the first page, me? No, he's oh. just, he doesn't like prevent it, basically. Because oh, it wasn't I, part of it. And I understand it's a standard instruction, Judge. It should just read, the act would have resulted in the death of count two, three, and four, or he failed to do so. But no, Judge, we think it needs to be in okay. there because what, okay. yes, sir. Leave it as it is. Rest of 16, okay? Oh, let me go to 16. No objection to 16, other than, again, or another person. Right. Yes. 17 deals with the sub-findings on the verdict form. We'll skip it. 18. No objection 18, Judge. 19. We now know we're calling this attempted voluntary manslaughter. Already out. Yes, sir. Other than that, any problem? Only to the objection of the lesser included judge as stated before. Okay. Page 20. Other than the objection to another person. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, we just need to comport the language or make the language comport with the first manslaughter, and I think we all agreed to just use the word used, correct, under the special findings. We're not at the special findings. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. We're still on 20. I haven't days. gotten there. I'm talking oh, okay. about page 20. Um, One thing at a time. 20. Any problem with 20 other than another person? No, Your Honor. No objection to 20 other than that stated. Twenty-one. Again, only of the or another person, Your Honor. Okay. Um, at the bottom of twenty-one, that starts getting into the sub findings, so we need to tag that and come back. Yes, sir. Same thing with 22. It's got some of those sub-findings in it. Yes, sir. Uh, you're right, if you find also. Any problem with the definition of a firearm or to actually possess on 22? Moves us on to attempted voluntary manslaughter. Yeah, one second. Because the, you know, these are just lessers. So count two, three, and four, less included attempted second. No, because it only talks about it up here. Because then this goes into lessers. Judge, 
Judge, I apologize. Page 23. 23. Yes. We've got the title, right? Of attempted voluntary manslaughter. That's what you wanted. The first line reads just like this new instruction. To prove the crime of attempted voluntary manslaughter, the only difference is they called that attempted manslaughter by act. The state must prove the following element beyond a reasonable doubt. Michael David Dunn intentionally committed an act which would have resulted in the death of, and then it counts two, three, or four, I know your objection to another person, except that someone prevented Michael David Dunn from killing, same thing, the two, three, and four, and another person, or he failed to do so. That comports with this 6.6 .6 that's attached to the uh, Williams, well, I don't know if it's attached to the Williams case, but it's this Supreme Court SC 12 462, February 6, 2014, revised opinion. Judge, and on the, on the actual instruction, it doesn't include or another person, it just includes the name or victim. So again, it would be the same objection, but even looking at standard instruction, it doesn't include anything about another or another person. It just says, resulted in the death of, parenthesis, on bold victim, except that True. someone prevented it. So again, or another person would be adding verbiage. On this new manslaughter instruction, at least the one that we're looking at that's attached to the Supreme Court thing, it does not have another person in there. What, I'm sorry, I'm missing something. We're on page 23. Yes, sir. Michael David Dunn intentionally committed an act which would have resulted in the death of count two, Tevin Thompson or another person. Yes, sir. This instruction we have now does not show or another person. It just says victim. And that would be the old one and the proposed new one as well, Judge. It just says that word victim. There's no strike. There's no underline. It looks like that would be old and new, so to speak. Um, I apologize for being lost, but take me back. We're on attempted voluntary manslaughter, the old version. No, we're on the one that's in our packet that's all grayed out. Okay. All I'm saying is Tevin Thompson or another person, Leland Brunson or another person, Tommy Storns or another person. Yes, sir. The new instruction does not show or another person. I'm told the old instruction does not show or another person, but I'll look it up. No, we, are you talking about where we separated out the names per count? Yep. Well, that's because that's, that's the language tracking how we alleged first degree murder, attempted first degree murder. This is a lesser included. So it wouldn't be in the instruction. It tracks the language we purport to have from the indictment. This isn't in the indictment. It's a lesser no, included. Right, but the or another person is. So for the lesser included, you, we're saying that he either committed, attempted first degree murder of this person or another person, the lesser included of second degree murder of this person or another person, and manslaughter of this person or another person. That, that's where that language comes from. It's not part of the standards. It's, it's from I how we... No, it's we not. And the only reason we had it in the others is because you said it was part of the standards. The or another person? Mm -hmm. No, Judge, I said we alleged it in the indictment. So or another person is not in any of the standard instructions? No, sir. It's how we alleged who he was shooting at in our indictment. I, I don't recall ever saying it's part of the standards. I we, thought you did. But. No, sir. It's okay. part of it's how we alleged it in the indictment. Like if we had said John Doe in the indictment, it would say John Doe every place that that is. So we alleged in the indictment for the main count that the defendant um, killed Jordan Davis on count one. But then on counts two, three, and four, we alleged that he did affect the death of Tevin Thompson, a human being, or another person. And did unlawfully, and did attempt to unlawfully kill the said Tevin Thompson by, and then the firearm language comes in. See that that's the name of the victim. That has nothing to do with the standards. That has to do with who we alleged in our indictment, and it tracks from the the count 
from the indictment, every lesser included reads the victim the same way. I, I'm, it's not part of manslaughter standards. It, it's what the state well, alleges. I understand now right. what you're saying. It's what yes, you sir. allege. I just yes, think sir. it's very, now that I know that, I think it's confusing. And I don't think you need it. Because you've got to count for Tevin Thompson. They think he tried to kill Tevin Thompson. They're going to find he tried to kill Kev Tevin Thompson. And I mean, quite frankly, if they think he tried to kill one of them, he tried to kill them all. Let's. Maybe with the exception of Leland Brunson. That, that's part of our problem, Judge. And now that we've got the defendant's He's testimony listening. that two people in the back seat were menacing him, um, we. Well, if that's the case, then you're making my argument. I'm thinking he may have killed the guy in the front seat, passenger side, because of the bullets in the door. He might have gotten the driver because the one that came through the back and whizzed by his head. Well, but it and, he might have, and he clearly got Jordan Davis, and he might have gotten Leland Brunson. Well, that, that bullet could just as easily have hit Leland Brunson. If you'll recall the photograph that has the dowel in it, it went right straight in the middle of all of them. I understand that, which brings me back to my point. You've got to count covering his attempt to kill every one of them. So we don't need another person. You've named all the people. What? You've named all the people. I took that to mean, quite frankly, that uh, to where somebody could find, well, he fired, he was really shooting at her, but he almost hit one of these guys. Well, but Judge, the problem is here, you've got very specific sets of bullets, and the only thing I would argue is I wouldn't want them to think that it doesn't apply to Leland or Tommy because Tevin was one at that front door with that set of shots. In other words, I don't want this jury assuming that this set of shots only belongs to Jordan, this set of shots only belongs to Tommy. So we alleged it that way because any of those shots could have penetrated. I've had a case where the shot went through the door, went through the passenger, and then through the driver. That happened in the Amico murder case we tried. So we allege it this way because we don't have to prove who he had a specific okay. intent to kill. And so you've had this instruction before and never gotten reversed on it, to the, your knowledge? The or another? Mm -hmm. No, sir. Okay. Did they? But if there wasn't an objection, the defense would have agreed to a special instruction. We're objecting to it because not only did they argue it with, or present it with evidence, they're going to make arguments. To or another person is basically then now, they're now trying to get transferred intent without even having the definition in there. They've got count one I, Jordan I Davis. She asked for transfer and 10. I thought I was doing you a favor by saying no. Right, and I wanted it out. But when they put or another person, they're basically getting it in without the definition of transfer. That's what they're arguing. Well, Judge, if they don't believe he, he tried to uh, commit murder on Tevin Thompson, you can find him guilty of anybody else that was around there. Every single person that they allege Mr. Dunn either murdered or attempted to murder, to attempt manslaughter, is listed in a count. Tevin Thompson has his own count. Leland Brunson has his own count. Tommy Storns has his own count. Once you start adding or another person and it's not a standard instruction, and I thought Ms. Corey said the same thing, you are now asking for a special instruction by the state and we're objecting to that. That's why we think it is misleading and confusing for a jury because they have a separate count for every individual named. Judge all I can say is it's been in the indictment since December of 2012, that language. Nobody ever moved to strike it from the indictment. When we track our victim, we track it from the indictment. And, and I don't, I'm not seeing that argument at all, but I'd like a chance to do the research on it. Okay. All right, so other than another person. Now on page 23 though, it still is adding or another person, but it's not in the standard instruction. So we agree with that. None of, none right. of this is in the standards. Okay. I now know. So we'll revisit another person on all of these. Thank you, Judge. So the rest of 23 though. Um, however, the defendant cannot be found, or excuse me, cannot be guilty of attempted voluntary manslaughter slaughter. Okay. 
by committing a merely negligent act, or the rest of this is stricken. Well, that, the new on the new one, mm -hmm. we wanted the old one, so I'm just making sure. So what they had stricken would still be in there. It is. Is that there? But you have got, now you've got a hybrid. Because if you go back up to the top where it says Michael David Dunn intentionally committed an act which would have resulted in the uh, death of, Oh, they changed, they did change it. I'm yeah, they took out right. was intended to cause the death of and would have resulted in the death of. And that has to go back in. Intentionally committed an act. So you want the old instruction? Yes, Your Honor. Which was, so we'd have to add which was intended to cause the death of. Wait a minute. What? Yeah, I'm listed. Okay. But wasn't that, didn't they also say in the same case that if you use it and it's not final, and that that's where they gave the caveats about that exact issue? Okay, all right, so leave it as it is, but, but going forward, I, I just don't know what to do. I don't either, Judge, and I just have to say as respectfully as I can, we deserve better guidance than this. We, we all do, and I don't know what the solution is, but, but to find out today that they proposed yet another set of changes that affects the standard language and justifiable use of deadly force makes all of our jobs impossible. It just does. And I, I don't know what to do about it, to be honest with you. I don't either. Here it is, five minutes to seven tonight. Yes, sir. We're still hacking around about this. I, and this was the same case we read and reread the other night multiple times. <laughs> That was the old instruction. Right. But the, the crux of the problem in that case was the intent. <laughs> well, Judge, w would it solve the problem to use the old instruction but just say Michael David Dunn intentionally committed an act which would have resulted in the death of? and just transfer just that one line? Is that what Maria's well, saying? Well, I don't know if she, she's saying that one line does need to be changed. Okay. No, that, I'm saying that's fine. That's no, that line needs to be changed to that. That. Well, it needs to differ from the, origin, from the standard instruction. So what I'm saying is, what you guys are proposing is a hybrid. We got a standard instruction that seemingly that first part that we're talking about now should not be there. We've got a new instruction that Mr. Strola doesn't want to go completely by. Not only does he not want to call it what the new instruction calls it, he wants some language from the old instruction in there.
You know, Judge, having lived through recent cases where jurors have actually opined that these instructions are so confusing they didn't understand them, I, I don't have any input. I will type whatever you tell me to type. Um, I'm sorry, but I just don't know. My feeling is roll the dice and go with the new one. I'll call it what you want to call it, which even still makes it a hybrid. Yes, sir. So it would still be called attempted manslaughter by act? No. no. You told me you wanted <laughs> attempted voluntary manslaughter. That's what you said you wanted, but I don't care. I'll call it attempted manslaughter by act. I think our concern was obviously the old to stick with the old standard instruction, but now we're saying you can't because they struck the line of it was intended to cause the death. Right. But then I don't think it matters what you call it, whether you call it attempted voluntary manslaughter or attempted manslaughter by act. The title is just a title. I would think that that wouldn't matter. So I'm I'm okay doing the so hybrid to that extent. Well, my, well, and that's what I, I want Mr. Dunn to understand, too, is if we're going to go with the new language of the proposed instruction where it says Appendix 6.6 .6, Attempted Manslaughter by Act, we're going to go with the new language. That's your choice. What I was saying is we can go with the thing, the new language in total, or my suggestion is you go with the new language on the body in the instruction, but I'll call it what you want. I'll call it attempted voluntary manslaughter. I, I don't but as I said, yes. now we're making it a hybrid. <laughs> I, I would rather, because this was as confusing as it was, I would rather keep it as close to, instead of then calling it attempted voluntary manslaughter, if we're going to go with the actual language they're proposing, because they have strikes through a ton of other stuff, then I think we either have to do attempted manslaughter by act with all of the proposals. Okay. Because I don't want to start making it a hybrid in terms of the body. Okay. And then... I'm good with that. Because then it becomes a special instruction, and then at that point, then it's an effective assistance where if I said, all right, this is a special instruction, the hybrid, it, it was confusing enough, and we've spent days on this already. So we're going back to <laughs> this. Well, no, this one's attempted voluntary manslaughter. It's not the attempted manslaughter by act. It's in my jury instructions. Oh, is it? I no, apologize. It's not the Go. one that's attached to the opinion. We're going back to the opinion. Right. For the appendix where they actually give right. you the instruction. So right. we're, that's what we're going to use now. And I believe that's on page 25. 25 and 26 should okay. exactly comport with that judge. Okay. <laughs> And obviously on my copy, it's in red, but that's why I put it in there. I, I think All right, so I, we're taking out 23 and 24. As soon as you Now we've got to go backwards. And correct everything else. Yes. Okay. So Judge, 20, I, can, I can make a note. Mr. Dunn, you understand all? I mean, I know that's very, very confusing. I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> he wanted, Mr. Dunn wanted to use the old language because of the way it it talks because it talks about if you look at paragraph it's, it's clearer clearer to you <laughs> more clear well, yeah because i believe you're referring to the the defendant cannot be guilty of attempted voluntary manslaughter if the attempted killing was either excusable or justifiable as i have previously explained in those terms and that's because the if you look at the other paragraph it becomes a little bit confusing and I think that was our issue. If you look to the very last, it says in order to convict. Well, it says only an intent to commit an act which would have caused death or was not justifiable or excusable attempted homicide. But part so, of the problem is you're defining negligence in the old instruction when it clearly says he committed an act which would have resulted in the death of, I think that's why they struck the negligence language because that adds to the confusion. So I, I don't know. Well, no, there, it's underlined by act by committing a merely negligent act. And I know it strikes, I will now define negligence for you. Right. But again, I just think that last line is confusing, even to argue a jury, which we just talked about where it says when they've underlined it, only an intent 
intent to commit an act which would have caused death and was not justifiable or excusable attempted homicide. Just the other way they had it, and I know they said that was the issue that was causing problems, but in our opinion, that was actually a lot clearer than what it is now. For um, a layman. Pardon? For a layman. For anybody. I agree with you. Because I like that it said, or if the attempted killing was either excusable or justifiable. It, it, so. Well, if then you're back to a hybrid. No, I, and that's what I'm trying to avoid, and that's that's the problem. We like the old instruction, but we you have to cut out was intended to cause the death of. You just have to change that first part. And then again, it becomes a special instruction, which I'm trying to avoid at all costs, Judge. But well, <laughs> listen, I'm getting tired of debating it. So we'll just I've asked on. you people for days to make a decision. Well, we did make the decision. The problem is now it's changed because you can't use the old language. So that's what I'm trying to explain to Mr. Dunn. Okay. So if we do... Has, has this new one been read? Yes, it, it, it has. That's what they were just explaining. See, that was my concern. Judge. We made a decision, but then once we went through it, you can't use that language. So if we use the old name, you got to still change it, make it a hybrid. So I think, basically, we either call this, but we can call it the attempted voluntary manslaughter, but you're still not going to get that in. It was intended to cause the death. Now, for that reason, Judge, where it starts the paragraph, however. Wait a minute. Are we back on page 23 no. and 24? Yes, Judge. On 23 where it says, however, the defense yes. cannot be guilty of attempted voluntary manslaughter by committing a merely negligent act or if the attempted killing was either excusable or justifiable, as I have, I have previously explained those terms. Okay. And they had struck an out, again, they struck out the, or if the attempted killing was either excusable or justifiable, and they added it at the, the bottom. Well, if I may, the reason I believe they did that is you get full instruction in introduction to homicide as well as introduction to attempted homicide as to the fact that it's not Hang on, let's just go a homicide or any lesser I'm included I'm if hybrid. it's <laughs> justifiable or excusable. What do you want to do, Mr. Stroh? Judge, we're just going to go with the new one of the attempted manslaughter by act with the new language. We're okay. going to be as clean as possible. Okay. Okay. So, so whatever the Supreme Court struck, we'll strike. Whatever they added, we'll add. Okay. And we will stick with the new 6.6 .6 attempted manslaughter by act. Which would be pages 25 and 26. Yes, sir. So we're taking out 20. Yes, sir. And I'll go back and correct any reference to voluntary. I'll search for the word voluntary and change it to attempted manslaughter by act. And we still have our objections to the or another person, Judge. To, right. And we're, we're, we're going to revisit that tomorrow. The, the state's going to see if they can find some justification for it. And then just with regard to the enhancement or the reclassification, I just need to know. We're revisiting that yes, sir. when we get through these instructions, if we ever get through these instructions. Yes, sir. So we're moving on to page 24. Now. Well, the new page, page 27. 24, yes. Oh. Hold on one second, Judge. Well, I'm going on my hard copy yes, sir. with what I've got. I've taken 23 and 4 out. Yes, sir. But I'm We're using page 25 and 26. Yes, I know sir. that it'll be renumbered. I'm not renumbering it now because we're going to go through and we're going to come back. Right. So 25 and 26, Mr. Strolley, you're good other than another person, and we have to come back on the enhancements. I was just seeing if that first paragraph up top tracked the new language on the bottom of where it starts in order to convict, Your Honor. That's how I was trying to, to match up. We good? Yes, Ron. Okay. 27. Thanks, Dad. No objection, Church. 
Hallelujah. We're going to get to I'm sorry, Aaron? I said hallelujah. Oh. Because okay. now we're to the easier part. Yes, sir, Judge. 28. Go, Judge. Date of the crime. 29, venue. 30, reasonable doubt. Burden of proof. On to 31, weighing the evidence. We've got one through eight. Which is really one through 10, and we struck seven and nine. State want either seven or nine based on what's gone on since yesterday. I don't think so, Judge, but let me just double check. Seven was pressure or threat. Nine was... Ten, Your Honor. Ten. Excuse me. Ten was general reputation. Yes, Your no, Honor. No, sir. Okay. We don't. So we're good with one through eight? I mean, they're renumbered to one through eight. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Accomplices, informants. We did not use one, so unless the defense requests it, we're taking no, it out. No, Your Honor. Take that out. Yes, sir. That. We know the defendant testified, so that goes in. Yes, Your Honor. Page 33 comes out. Yes, Your Honor. Page 34 is in after the video was shown. Ooh. Yeah. You've also, let me go back to page 32. You've got um, highlighted, give only if defendant testified, so that's obviously in. Yes, sir. Uh, 34, defendant statements, that's in. 35, rules for deliberation. Good to go there? Yes, Your Honor. 36, cautionary instruction. 37 is notes. 38 is verdict. 39, single defendant, multiple counts. Did you say 39, Judge, or 30? 39 should be single defendant, yes, multiple counts. Yes, and 40 should be submitting the case to the jury. Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. I was talking that to Mr. Dunn, Judge. These are the standard instructions. This will get submitted inside. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. So, which one you want to tackle first? You want to go back to these to match these up with the jury instruction, or you want to tackle justifiable use? Judge, for justifiable use, I did send you that copy. I think we just have to add some other things in there as well as I was going through it. Yeah, well, let's do this. Let's go back and get these verdict forms right, and because then that, that's all we got left. So yes, sir. Well, on to verdict number verdict form. First off, let's look at the verdict forms. Verdict form number one. Any objection to that, Mr. Stroller? And we already took out or great bodily harm mm -hmm. uh, under 1A. Right, but I... I don't see it. I guess you did. I took it out, and then I changed the fourth one to accurately reflect 1, 2, and 3. In other words, saying we did not find number 1, number 2, or number 3. Right. Yeah, I don't know if that printed out on your copy, but. There should be four sub findings. Yes, sir. You said you wanted four sub findings, right. Judge. Yes, Your Honor, but I believe we said we were going to take a, just causing death versus or great bodily harm or yes, great sir. bodily harm was going to be stricken on 1A, that first subsetting. Yeah, I took it out, but. Is I don't have on my printed copy, it's on there. 
Okay, strike it. I already took it out. Okay, I did. And then, Judge, you want the fourth finding to read. We find that the defendant did not discharge a firearm causing death, did not discharge a firearm, or did not actually possess a firearm during the commission of the offense. That's the fourth finding you're requesting. Yeah, we find that the defendant did not actually possess or discharge a firearm during the commission of the offense. Well, that leaves out the first sub finding, so. I'm just reading what I got here. Yeah, no, I changed it because you said you wanted it to be, it's one, two, three, or it's none of the three above. So I made the fourth one to reflect that it's none of the first three. No, that's not what I meant. Okay. I want a place for them to check a block, any one of the four. Yes, sir. So the fourth one would be, they've gone through one, two, th one, two and three. Yes, sir. They didn't check any of them. Number yes, four, sir. we find that the defendant did not actually possess or discharge a firearm during the commission of the offense. Oh, I see. And, but you're saying that covers did not discharge and cause death. See, because that's the first sub-finding. I know it's confusing. Yeah. Sure it does. The first one is we find the defendant discharged a firearm causing death during the commission of the offense. Second one, we find the defendant discharged a firearm during the commission of the offense. Third one, we find the defendant actually possessed a firearm and did not discharge it. And then the last one, we find the defendant did not actually possess or discharge a firearm. I mean, the way I've got it here is fine. And actually, these are dated 128 at 221 p.m. I just have February 11th, just the ones that were just printed out. February 11th at 527 p.m. Well, I, I don't know. I didn't get a copy of those. The verdict forms? Yep. I, I, yes, I, Miriam handed them to you, Judge. They have they have a highlighter. Huh? I got the one with the expectation. I've got that, but it doesn't have the right date at the bottom. What does your say, Judge? One twenty eight to two twenty one PM. I don't see another set of jury instructions. Okay. Well, Judge, I'll just type whatever you tell me to. I can track it. Mm -hmm. Maybe Miriam's printing another one. Okay. No, I Wait a minute. I still like to put my desk on. I found them. Okay. And are we taking out the old gray bottle? Yes. I've already taken out or great bodily harm. Okay. So, jury instruction, verdict, count one, first page. Is that okay, Mr. Stroll? I'm not sure if you got the new version for where it says for one A. That first subsection, Your Honor, mm -hmm. does that read, we find the defendant discharge a firearm causing death during the commission of the offense? Yes. Okay. I have the old No, one. it does okay. not. It says, or great bodily harm. Right, and I've stricken that from this copy. Okay. Okay. The last copy I had didn't have that in there. I, I know. It was because I redid it to comport with the indictment, and then he agreed to waive it all together. All so, right. but I've got what you want. Okay, so now two, three, and four are okay. I think and the sub findings under A. Right. Other than the or great bodily harm can be taken out. Mm -hmm. That was sub finding one. We already got that covered. So now, 
sub finding under three. Yeah. Correct. So that's okay. Well, it's highlighted. Did carry, display, or use a firearm? You wanted that in there because that's in the other one. Right? No, because I think we just said just use. Right. I think we had done just use, Your Honor, I believe. We did? Mm -hmm. Okay, so change that to use. We find that the defendant did use. Okay. All right, so now he's agreeing to just use. Yes. So it would read, we find that the defendant did use a firearm during the commission of the offense. We find that the defendant did not use a firearm during the commission of the offense. Correct. All right, so then we have to go over to the instructions on count one, which is page seven. And the third full paragraph, if you find the defendant committed murder in the first degree and you also find beyond a reasonable doubt that during the commission of the crime, he actually possessed a firearm It, that needs to change. He actually possessed a firearm and did not discharge it. So you're just adding in and did not discharge it if you want it to read exactly the way number three, the sub finding reads. Got it? Hello? Yes. You got that, Ms. Corey? Yes, sir. Okay. So then we're going to put a little fourth thing in there on page seven, right? That's what you all were talking about. That's why we're coming back to these things. Aww. You said you now want something in there that says... If you find that the defendant did not actually possess or discharge a firearm during the commission of the offense. For counts two, three, and four, you only have, you have one less sub finding because there was no death. I'm not on counts two, three, and four. I'm on oh, count one. I'm sorry then. Where, where are you talking about then, Judge? I apologize. Page seven of the jury instructions. Oh, well, the, you went back to the jury instructions. I apologize. I'll have it comport whatever way you want me to. You tell me what you want in there and I'll put it in there. That's what I'm trying to do. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. We're back to page seven. The first finding and the second one, the way it reads in there, I believe we said we're fine. The third one needs to add something in there because there's a little extra language in the third sub finding in count one. On the verdict form, it says we find that the defendant actually possessed a firearm and did not discharge it during the commission of the offense. So I thought what everybody wanted was where it says he actually possessed a firearm um, and did not discharge it. You should find him guilty of murder in the first degree with actual possession of a firearm. I've never done it this way. I, and I think what I said earlier is some judges do it that way. I don't. I know. Then I'd rather do it the cleaner way, to be honest with you. I really would. Fine. Then we are leaving the jury instructions as they are. Okay. We're not fooling with these enhancements. Okay. This is just more, the verdict form is a little bit different. I understand that, but it's way more self-explanatory and much easier for a jury to figure out. And... If they want to somehow find him guilty of one of these things, but they're smart enough to decide to give him a break and find no min man on it, they can make that finding there, which is what number four is on count one. Right. Plus, you explain the verdict form to him. So yeah. you, you get to explain that the way exactly. you choose. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's important. Okay, you're good with that? Are you I okay can. with that, Mr. Strollo? 
to leave it the way it is? Leave the jury instructions the way they are, and the, yes, the verdict forms are going to be slightly different. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Beautiful. Your Honor. You guys, now we're talking. So we're taking <laughs> off all my yellow, yellow stickies. That's the best move we made all night. Um, so the only thing on the jury instructions we got to mess around with is another person. And then the justifiable use of deadly force. And that's right. Well, we got to get all the way through these verdict forms, but that's going to be easy now. <laughs> Didn't want to leave that part out, Judge. I know. Okay, we're good now. All right. So count one. You're good to go. Except you've got to change just to use. That right. Okay. I did. Right. Now under subfinding three of count one, it reads: We find that the defendant did use a firearm during the commission of yep. the offense. We find that the defendant did not use a firearm during the commission Bingo. of the offense. Is that good for you? So, I'm sorry. On the verdict form, page one, subsection one a three. Mm -hmm. Say that again. I apologize. No, yeah. we're actually we're oh. we're finished with page one. Okay, we're good. That's what I was asking. Now we're over on page two. Okay. Big number three. Gotcha. The that's sub findings. Okay did use, not carry, display. Correct. We find that the defendant did use a firearm. We find that the defendant did not use a firearm. Perfect. So we're good with count one. Yes, sir. I had that written in there. Yes, sir. On to count two. And thank God it'll be the same for three, four, and five. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, looks good to me. Um. Lesser included of manslaughter, uh -oh. number three. Now, we, let me ask you this. We are, did we decide we're calling it attempted voluntary manslaughter? No, no. sir. Attempted okay. manslaughter by act. So by that changes back. We're, yep. Yeah, we're going to go back to what they just proposed, the Supreme okay. Court just proposed. Okay, so now under count two, and the same will apply for three and four, number three. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of attempted manslaughter by act. Correct. Class included offense. Now all we have to do is clean up, carry, use, displayed. Right. So that, that'll just going? say defendant did use or defendant did not use. And then you got to do the same thing for three, four, three, and four. I will correct all of those things for all of those counts. Look at count five. Whoop, one second, Your Honor. That's the easy one. Judge, no objection to the way the verdict is for count five is right. Okay. I don't know if you were waiting for that, Judge. I apologize. All right. So on to, that's it. We're just to justify the use of deadly force. And then tomorrow we'll figure out this um, another person business. Yes, sir. I'll find case law. I got a variety of these uh, justifiable use of deadly force jobs. Judge, I sent you a three page or two and a half page instruction last evening, and I think I added another case law okay. an email while we were on break. It's just a blurb about it with the actual site, Your Honor. Okay. All right. I'm looking at what yours is, I believe. Of course, we need to get it in the form that Ms. Corey's printing all these out in, but. <laughs> Ms. Corey, have you got a copy of this? I do. So, 
Wait, the one I'm looking at. An issue in this case is whether Michael, now do you want to go to Michael Dunn or Michael David Dunn? Michael Dunn. Do you I, want, I, oh, I'm sorry. Do you want Michael Dunn throughout these jury instructions? Leave out the David? Yeah, let me ask you. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer just to be Michael Dunn, Judge. I, we haven't called him Michael David Dunn the entire trial. I know it's in the information and indictment. And let me tell you, sometimes when I'm reading these instructions, I'll say, I might, even though it says Michael Dunn, I might shift to Mr. Dunn. That's or I might say Michael Dunn. You know, I, I, I kind of rock back and forth just as long as it's I just do it. Sorry, Judge. We would just request it say Michael Dunn throughout the instructions. All right, Ms. Corey, so... Let me go in and make that change right now. If you'll give me one second, I can do it all at one time. Well, let's know. Let's, I don't want to do that because I'm going to leave you people. <laughs> We're going to leave Ms. Corey now, and Mr. Mr. Strola. You can go, Mr. Dunn can go where he's got to go for tonight, and we'll leave that to Miss Corey. Now you sound like your twin <laughs> in the portrait behind me. Well, now that it's 7.30, I didn't get lunch, and I'm still waiting on dinner. Uh, that's right, Joe. I'm just going to go home and go to bed, Judge. Don't worry. Yeah, Don't I hear worry. You. My head's going to hit that. Well, that's right. true. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do all that. <laughs> you guys do have a little bit more to think about tonight than I do. Um, so I, I apologize. That's okay, Judge. We're we'll all sit over. here with you, Miss Corey. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just did it. I made 30 replacements that all right. quick. Did okay. you also replace um, voluntary manslaughter by act? You I'm already got go that done? And, we've made detailed notes to go back and check all of this. And I'll have this in the drop box by midnight. You better have it before that. <laughs> I'll have it as soon as I can. I'm not leaving here until I get it we done. We may not be starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Okay, so an issue in this case is whether Michael Dunn acted in self-defense. It is a defense to the offense with which Michael Dunn is charged if the death of Jordan Davis resulted from the justifiable use of deadly force. We agreeable on that. Yes. And it says deadly force means force likely to cause death or great bodily harm. That's all standard stuff. So we're good there. Next. The use of deadly force is justifiable only if, take out the, only if Michael Dunn. Oh, uh, you might be looking at an older one because the one I have is out. We should have sent you. You should have the newer one last night. I did take that out. Okay. Reasonably believes that the force is necessary. You want to say believes or believed? Well, the instruction says believes. Right. Reason believes that the force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself while resisting another's attempt to murder him or any attempt to commit aggravated assault, aggravated battery, or murder upon him. Judge, and the only thing I would add there is I looked at some of the case law, and I know it's going to sound funny because it says any attempt, but it, there is case law that says attempted murder, so I need to have it read. Any attempt to commit aggravated assault, aggravated battery, attempted murder, or murder, and then I have to add the definition of attempted murder. I was looking at a case uh, this morning from an appellate attorney in Tallahassee, and the instruction read in it, attempted murder. And I know it sounds funny because it says attempt, but I do need to add attempted murder or okay. murder. Okay. All right, then number three is going to read the same. You're going to add the attempted murder in there. Judge, and I think I also, and I apologize. And we just have vehicle, no, nothing else. Right. And I think also on number one and two, it needs to say another's attempt to murder him or another or. And then number two would say upon him or another or. I believe because the justice use of deadly force as if he's defending himself or another, and there was testimony by him that he believed Rhonda was in danger, Miss Rower was in danger, and another case that I saw did have that verbiage. And again, I know it, it's, it sounds duplicative because it says, uh, number one would read, another's attempt to murder him, comma, or another, comma, or, 
any attempt to commit aggravated assault, aggravated battery, attempted murder, or murder upon him, comma, or another, or, and read it that way. And okay, I, well, I don't, the, the instructions themselves don't have this or another person. I just before. found that today when I got uh, an appellate attorney in Tallahassee sent me the case and I was reading it. And there's, again, a plethora of ruling okay. instructions. So I did submit the case law in an email and then I sent it to you just recently. I want to forward that to Maria. Can we just know the name of the case? I have several of them here. I sent you an email as well. I Is it Oda? No, I no. That was the one from last evening. Is it Barnes? Hold on one second. I'm gonna have to. I only have a hundred emails, so I'm gonna have to go all the way back to. Hold on, I can find. Yeah, it. I got Oda and Barnes. I did send those two, but there was an additional one that I believe I sent. One second, Your Honor. to look. I have about five emails and I just looked at it. I have 91 new emails to judge. Oh my God. Oh. Oda does talk about it. The O-D-E-H and that doesn't have it. I gotta find it. Second your own. I see an instruction was sent me, but I don't see. No, no, I, the one I had sent you last evening had only the another's attempt to murder him or any attempt to commit ag assault, ag bat. I need to add attempted murder there as well. But it only talks about him, meaning Mr. No, I'm asking Mr. about the case law. Oh, Judge, I apologize. I had sent you two last night, I believe. One again just while we took a recess. And I'm looking at the other one now. You sent us Barnes and Oda. O-D-E-H. There should have been. Hold on. Let me go. Yeah, I don't see anything else. I, I've, Hold on. Let me go because I know I did. Let me well, just look. you said last me. night? No, no. I, I sent the two to you last night. I think those were the two. And you sent something today? Right when we stepped out. So that's what I'm looking for. Roughly like, what time? When we were on our break, I sent it through my phone. One, uh, if, here we go. At 514. Oh, that was, it's the Worley, W-O-R-L-E-Y, the state, 848 Southern 2nd, 491 out of the 5th DCA. But Can that's not the, it was to, I don't know, do you want me to put your email address? I, yeah, I don't care. Okay. Acori at coj.net, and I got confirmation at 514 this evening. Wait, did you send another case? But I didn't get it. You, no, well, I, I sent didn't. it to you as well, Judge, and I sent it to the one I, I know went through. I'm not seeing it. Okay, and I'll just tell you this, Judge. I have taken every case from us and from him and put them all in a one note. And I don't have that one, but I just recently. It's just it a, it, what it is. It, the title, the subject says J U D F case law supplement, and it, it's a part of it. But I did send it to the J L it, it, address. R L. What's oh, J L? I have J L Healy. R L. All right. Then I have two bad email addresses for you. <laughs> R -L. That would explain why you don't have yeah. it. Why did you get it? <laughs> if you just resend that case, I can take the copy and throw it straight. In I didn't, it wasn't a copy. It was a. It was a quote from it. Oh, a quote. Talking about the defense theory. As long as there's any support for it, it's valid for the instructions. And I've got to find. And again, I apologize when I look through. I now literally have over hundred emails, Judge. Let me go ahead and try to correct that. Oh, goodness gracious. I am going to save these and send them to you and make sure they're, I'm going to send them to myself and you pull them up and make sure they're all right. I'm just sick on my stomach.
Did I send you Washington v. State? Well, let's not worry about that. Okay. And part of it was, though, Judge, under the case law, it says if there's the if there's part of the defense theory, my concern is the way the justifiable use of deadly force, it only talks about him, about him, about him. And I think it's clear it could be him or another. And his testimony was I was in fear for Rhonda as well. And if the jury believes he was. Okay. Well, so, so no, we'll just look at that case. But go ahead and make your changes so you've got it like you want. And I'm going to, and I will do that. Do you want me to read it on the record and then it might, no. it might, okay. I want you to just do it and send it to us later. Okay. I will have that done as soon as I so want. So now we're after, now we've gotten through one, two, and three. Yes, sir, Judge. Now we're at, you've got a definition of ag assault, ag battery, murder, which is, uh, premeditated, and then murder second degree. The only thing I have to add is the attempted murder. I'll add that definition as well, Judge. Okay. And, and Judge, just for whatever it's worth, I don't know why you would have murder in two and three when it's right there in number one. I can capitalize it, but I, you just don't need it. And, and the case law, at least one of these cases, I think it's Murray or one of them, maybe it's Kagan, I don't know, says the two suggested ones for a situation like this are aggravated assault and ag battery. I kind of agree. I, I thought that the murder... Now, you might put attempted murder in there. Absolutely. We could do that, Judge. I can have it read ag assault, ag battery, attempted murder, because number one does say murder, or, and then it goes down. Okay. So I can take murder out of two and three okay. and supplement that with attempted murder and put that definition in there, Judge. Can you live with that, Ms. Corey? Yes, sir. All right. As, as long as he's making the changes and then he sends me whatever you approve and I will... Put it verbatim into those instructions. Okay. And so then you've got your definitions. Then we're moving on to a person is justified in using deadly, deadly force if he reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent. Judge, and what I did on that is I'm going to modify it to Michael Dunn is justified. Again, just from reading some of the case law, there was some reversals and fundamental error where they said that the instructions were confusing and circular where... One case actually quoted, and I think I, I think it was the Oda case, they put it in quote saying you almost have to put the defendant believe the victim tried to commit these crimes. It was just, it was extremely confusing, and it usually says that a person is justified, and that was the standard one. But with the cases that I looked at, it, it, it did make it very clear. It almost made it sound like you have to be very specific saying – all right, Maria, Mr. Dunn believed that this was going to happen by the victim. Look, into, look at that tonight. So instead of it saying a person is justified, I clarified it to, that they know it's Michael Dunn is because he's alleging that Jordan Davis was going to do one or number two of that subsection judge. And I think one of the cases, and if your clerk... I wonder why... why well. And I know it says that, and I agree, but when I was reading some of the case law earlier this okay, morning. Okay, I got it. Okay. Number one. Do it just like he's probably harmed to himself or another. Or. Okay. Then we're at number two. Imminent commission of ag assault with a deadly weapon, ag battery with a deadly weapon, attempted murder, or murder against himself or another. And then I just have to add the definition again of attempted murder, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. And then I think we just go down into in deciding whether. And then you define them again. And we, we had a case, didn't we, Maria, that says you got to define them again. Ag assault, ag battery, murder. But you are right. We do, it does say do it both times, though. Right. Right. For both sections, the one, two, and three, you have to do the definitions for one and two. It does say on the standard or instruction to add definitions again or add definitions here. But I do agree with Maria Judge for the attempted manslaughter. We then have to read it again. Okay. Okay. And then it drops us down to in deciding whether Michael Dunn was justified in the use of deadly force. Right. You Which must is... judge him. That was all standard. And I just added Michael Dunn's name in there. The danger facing Michael Dunn need have been actual. Uh, based upon appearances, Michael Dunn must have actually believed that the danger was real. 
I think the next paragraph was standard as well, Judge. I just added if Michael Dunn was not engaged in an unlawful, unlawful activity. Um, yep. And then the next one is in an occupied vehicle. And, and Judge, we're objecting to that, the presumption of fear. I, I didn't see that. I don't, is that in your instruction? Mr. Stroller, the presumption of fear? It says a person who unlawfully and by force enters or attempts to enter another's occupied vehicle is presumed to be doing so with the intent to commit an unlawful... Hold on. Oh, I'm Slow sorry. down. The court I, reporter's not getting you. I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me do it. <laughs> yes, sir, Judge. He is, he is presumed to have had a reasonable fear of imminent death. It says, if the defendant was in an occupied vehicle where he had a right to be, he is presumed to have had a reasonable fear of imminent death or great bodily harm to himself if Jordan Davis had Wait, where, where are we at, Judge? I apologize. Called presumption of fear. Whoop. Let me go to it because I think Which is why you should be here. I don't think yeah, I this, this part's wrong. I don't think I had that. Okay. If on, Jordan Davis had and this says unlawfully and forcibly entered and removed or, or attempted to remove another. another person against that person's will from that occupied vehicle. Correct. And the state objects to that. They, they have not met that standard. It's called the presumption of fear that applies to a dwelling residence or occupied vehicle. And we don't believe that that applies. And if that doesn't apply, neither does the following presumption under 776.013. I agree. This says basically what you'd have to have is Jordan Davis entered the vehicle or attempted to remove someone from the vehicle against their will, which never happened. There's no evidence whatsoever of that. Give if applicable. Uh, over your objection, Mr. Strollo, we'll just show you want it. I'm not going to give it because there's no evidence of it. Okay. And, we, and at the state's request, not to give it, correct? Yes, sir. We don't believe that that's applicable. Okay. Then it's out. Now, what else did you think should be in there? Well, I'm just going to Are we there yet? Oh, there's a, there's a follow-up to that that Mr. Strolla had originally requested, but I don't see it in his... Then let's not lead. talk about I'm, it. I don't want to talk about well, it. Well, I put it, because I have it on the instruction I have too, right after in deciding, we went through that in deciding whether the defendant was justified. It was that next paragraph, if Michael Dunn was not engaged in the unlawful activity. So I'm just making sure I'm on the same page with you. No, yeah. that, that paragraph comes right. in if the defendant That's was in. not. That comes I'm just, in. No, I'm talking I'm about after that. <laughs> and then it goes to a person who unlawfully or by force enters or attempts to enter another's occupied vehicle. And that's the... Right. Okay, the, there it is. A person who unlawfully and by force enters or attempts to enter another's occupied vehicle presumed to be doing so with the intent to commit the felony. No, it doesn't say... Oh, that's underneath. Attempts. It says unlawfully and forcibly entered, removed, or attempted to remove. The word attempt is not in unlawfully and forcibly entered. No, I think I'm looking under... Sorry. I think that's where the confusion came in earlier, is Mr. Strolla suggested that Jordan Davis could be attempting to enter his car. That, that's not what this jury instruction says. But I believe... If you read it, Judge, it says 776013 subsection 4, a person who unlawfully and by force enters or attempts to enter another another's occupied vehicle. Well, hang on. Stop. Here's what we've got. A person is justified in using deadly force if, one, imminent, great, imminent death or great bodily harm. No problem. Two, Ag assault, ag battery, no problem. Now we're defining those things, no problem. Then we get to 
and I'm on page two, middle of the page, in deciding whether Michael Dunn was justified in the use of deadly force, you must judge him by the circumstances. That's, that's standard. That yes, comes sir. in all cases. The next paragraph. If Michael Dunn was not engaged in unlawful activity and was attacked in any place where he had a right to be, he had no, no duty to retreat. Okay? Standard. That's in. The next one is the one that's out which is somebody trying to remove him from a vehicle. That's out. Which then means the following paragraph is also out. Okay. So that would include a person who unlawfully by force enters or attempts to enter another's occupied vehicle. Right. And then it says, as used with regard to self-defense, vehicle means this. Yes, sir. We're saying that those all only track if you give the first paragraph. Right. So you don't need as used with regard to self-defense and then talking about vehicle. Right. And that's out over defense objection or state's objection defense request. Right. Now, okay. then what you get back to in considering the issue of self-defense, you may take into, the into account the relative physical abilities. That's mm -hmm. it. And I did put Michael Dunn and Jordan Davis. This has defendant Jordan Davis. But mine is, my, it has Michael Dunn and Jordan Davis on mine, Judge. I'm, just, I'm looking at what Ms. Corey put in there and what I put in there, Judge. Okay, and then the rest of it's good. Yes. Yeah, it's just those last three paragraphs. All right. Sorry. Judge, I know you're not going to like this, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to go back to 78202, the very first paragraph. And I'm not sure why you would talk about an attempt to commit an applicable felony upon him and his occupied vehicle when you've already told them any attempt to commit an applicable felony upon him, wherever he is in the whole universe. My recollection is there's case law that says you can give them both. There's a lot of case law. Huh? That OD. Okay. It, it just looks like it puts a burden on him to prove he was in an occupied vehicle when you're already telling him any attempt to commit the applicable felony upon him, basically implying anywhere in the universe where he is. I, I, don't, I don't get it, but Judge, I'll defer to you. We just we They just want it. Yes, And there's sir. case law to support it. Yes, sir. That I read, so I'll give it. Yes, sir. And then there was one section where you said, don't I have to read the forcible felony again? So you have to read it for number two and three. Then you have to read it again for 776.012, and Judge, you're correct. You have to read it again for that paragraph that starts off if the defendant was not engaged in an unlawful activity. It says, define applicable forcible felony. It gives you that instruction right underneath that paragraph. So I, I think what you said that, and then... I never heard whether or not you felt like you had to redefine them all three times or you can, the second two times, you can say, as I've just defined those for you. I was going to do it twice. I didn't think I had to do it the third time. I just would invite you to look at the instruction underneath that paragraph. If the defendant was not engaged in an unlawful activity, that's that whole thing that's meet force with force. The very last line says, or great bodily harm to himself or another, or to prevent the commission of a mm -hmm. forcible felony. Yep. It does so say define that, applicable force. That's the forcible third felony. place it tells you to do it. I'm just okay. putting you back on the. I'll put it in there. Okay. So we'll add all the definitions again after forcible felony. Yep. And all four. So we have attempted. Ag assault, mm -hmm. ag bat, attempted murder. Well, we actually have more because I have even second degree murder. Okay, add all definitions again. All right, now, That's last be thing. Instruction. Um, where are we putting this in here? My understanding, and of course I changed my pages, but I'll give you a title um, because I've already been trying to redact my thought would be it goes right after count five because I'm assuming they're saying it applies to all five counts. So it would go between count five of the indictment and date of the crime. Judge, I think, I think it goes right after the introduction to homicide and that goes in there and then it goes to count one of the indictment as murder. And Maria, where does, where does this go? 
Justifiable use of deadly force. Where does it go in relation to all the rest of them? Wasn't that what we were talking about, about a manslaughter thing? Oh, oh, after each charge. It's, it's an affirmative defense that, as far as I can tell, should be read one time and it applies to all five counts. Well, Is this the case Judge Mitchell was talking yes, about? Yes, after the manslaughter, if he has case law, if he reverses the error, then the manslaughter needs to be found guilty of manslaughter. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm Even if it's a lesser included? And Judge, it was my understanding that it's usually right after or right before you read the homicide. It, it, it's the introduction to homicide and then just for by use of justifiable use of deadly force before you start going to count one, count two, count three. All right, so you would want it. Right before you read count one of the indictment murder in okay. the first degree. And then if we have to do it again, because my, my other concern that Mr. Dunn had as well is he wanted it after to apply to count five, because count five doesn't mention anything about excusable, justified anything. It just says shooting into an occupied vehicle. Obviously, I'm going to, and I explain, I'm going to argue that this covers all the counts in the verdict. Well, okay. But, all right. So you're going to read the definitions of forcible felonies, claiming Jordan Davis was committing forcible felonies on him before we've even read the charges on what we've charged him with? There's a case that says that? That, that's in there. Justifiable and excusable ref, doesn't refer to justifiable use of deadly force under 776. That's in the standards that gets read Right. In introduction to homicide and introduction to attempted homicide. And you do have to read those in their entirety. So is it, was it in there? No. Okay. That's not well, uh, It's. Hold on. Let me find manslaughter. Well. Because then you have the lessors of attempted manslaughter. Yeah, no, it's there. In manslaughter, I think, and I haven't read that case. In manslaughter, Maria, we've got what page negligence. This is page 11 of 40. Negligence, justifiable homicide, excusable homicide. That's in there, which is different than justifiable use of deadly force. Right. right. And if this case cites the, the instance of case that Judge Mitchell has, he's calling, we're talking about this, does he repeat his course, does he repeat his course, does he repeat his Well, but you've already said it. The instruction was given at the beginning of homicide, and then it wasn't given again at the beginning of manslaughter, which it is in ours. Oh, We've got it covered. Okay, it's covered. I believe so. I'll, I'll, give me that. I'll read that tonight. I, I, I agree that justifiable and excusable homicide have to be in the places that were just said. I thought your question, and I apologize, I thought your question was where do we insert the affirmative defense that we've just gone over? I did, and I was led to believe in the hallway that you had to also add in justifiable use of deadly force around the manslaughter instruction, but I don't believe that's what that case says. I, I don't either, and I so, think it goes after all five counts because it's an affirmative defense to all five counts. And that way it, it, it applies to all five counts. So it would go in after shooting into an occupied dwelling, uh, vehicle. Vehicle. Then what I would have to add, well, I guess I would argue, I just want to make sure the jury's clear that that would be justifiable for all counts. And then it's going to have to say, Judge, and again, I'll change it. The very first paragraph of my justifiable use of deadly force, I think the way to make it clear is say, an issue in this case is whether Michael Dunn acted in self-defense. It is a, def a defense to the offenses or maybe put all five counts 
because it says offense singular, but we've got five counts. Yeah. So I think I want to make it clear, or I think I need to make it clear that it's. Well, a, I, t I put in there, it's a defense to each of the. F it's a defense to each of the five counts. And lesser included. And all lesser included. Yeah. And all lesser included. Or lesser included offenses. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. Super easy to do. Super easy to do to make it clear. So, Judge, correct me if I'm wrong, it's to read it is a defense to each of the five counts and all lesser included offenses with which Michael Dunn is charged. And then again, but here it says if the death of Jordan Davis resulted, but then I still have to talk about the other alleged victims as well. So I need to put the death of Jordan Davis and a, and a, an attempted death. It's going to not make any sense. Let me look at it. No, no, I understand, but then you still need it for all five counts because they're charged with the attempted of each individual. All right, an issue in this case is whether Michael Dunn acted in self-defense. It is a defense to each of the five counts Comma. in the indictment. Whoop. Hold on, Judge, hold on to that because I'm, I'm handwriting it. Yes, sir. And the lesser included offenses. Can I put and all lesser included offenses? Well, I was going to say, and the lesser included offenses associated with each count. Associated. I'm sorry. And all. Uh, all and less. Lesser, and all lesser included offenses associated asso associated with each count. count. And then again, another. Or you could say each separate comma. count if you want. I'm sorry. You could say each separate count. Each. <laughs> okay. To each of the five counts in the indictment, comma, and all lesser included offenses associated with each separate count, comma, with which Michael Dunn is charged. Mm -hmm. And then the problem is it gets to singular if the death of Jordan Davis resulted, but it needs to really go into the attempted murder of everybody listed. Because I don't want the I don't want the jury to think this is only a defense to count one. Well, why don't we just stop it there? Stop it where, Judge? Don't put in there if the death of Jordan Davis okay. resulted. Take okay. that out. So say with which Michael Dunn is charged, period? Yeah. So it'll read, just trigger, just to verify, Judge, if I may. It is a defense to each of the five counts in the indictment, comma, and all lesser included offenses associated which, with each separate count, comma, with which Michael Dunn is charged, period. Works for me. And then it goes in the definition of deadly force, and we've already gone through the rest. Does that work for you, Miss Corey? And that covers everything. Judge, what I'm planning on doing is whatever Mr. Strolla types up, if it comports with what you've ordered, I'm just going to adapt it to the font and insert it. So we still okay. have to see. I, I am officially declaring whatever. You're waving okay. the white flag. I, I have one more proposal <laughs> to solve the or another person, and I'd like one 30 seconds to consult with Mr. Guy, but I think if we give transferred intent, then we could delete the or another person, and that would cover both bases, and then we could argue it in closing argument. Did you hear that, Mr. Strollo? I, I apologize, I did not. No, she was saying if you were to agree with transferred intent, we'd take out this another person on all these things. I, I don't agree with both. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll look for case law then, Judge, and I'll get with you in the morning. Okay. We can just make it easy and take it out, Judge. I, I, not if I don't have to. Just to see, Judge. Um, Judge, can I have your permission to take a picture of the courtroom with the clock in it showing that nobody was here and nobody's been here? I guess so. Thank you. Can I submit that as my brief to the DCA? Yeah. <laughs>
because we've talked a lot on the record and we've said a lot of important things well, that the public needs live. to know. We're live, yeah, so we're still live. I know that. We're all here. <laughs> all right. Hmm. Okay, what else? What else you got, Judge? Oh. How's your iPad? Take about a 15 minute break. We got a couple more hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, for purposes of any further um, hearings or appeals, would you be willing to note for the record that what time we started these proceedings and that you invited anyone who wanted to come in and that it's been as empty as the pictures I just took since we started? Yeah, there hasn't been anybody in here other than bailiffs and the attorneys. I guess we've had a live stream. Um, I'm not sure what time we started. We'd have to check the record, but it was probably about 5.30. Okay. So, so we've been, been live two and a half hours. Okay. Um, and, you know, to the extent that somebody did not get access this morning at 8 o'clock, I suspect that was just something inadvertent. I, I didn't know it. If they brought it to my attention, I'd have told them to come on in. But nobody told me. I understand that, Mr. Smith, and I appreciate it, but there's been another appeal to the District Court of Appeals saying that people were precluded access from the courtroom this morning, even though it was a live feed, not only on the Internet, but across the hall. I, I don't know what happened. Yes. Yes. Uh, what time do you want to get here in the morning? Make sure we got these firmed up. I just want to make sure I got a hard copy that I can get copied for myself, and then I'm, my plan is I'm going to have 12 copies, one for each juror. Okay. Well, my goal is to clean everything up that we can. Send it tonight. Put it in the Dropbox. I'll email it and put it in the Dropbox, the verdict forms, and the jury instructions, and then I've left a clear place. Insert just by weeks of deadly force. And as soon as you approve whatever he submits to you or sends us tonight, I'll conform the font and put it in there. Okay. Judge and Judge. So now I have two bad addresses for your email. I've, I've gotten it. some stuff from you. And I, I guess I don't understand why. I had R, or JL, RL. I don't know how I got that, Judge. And when I go to put it in there, it gives me the pre program. I don't know, maybe I'm doing this kid. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a test one right now. Just so I have it. It's RL, correct? Yeah. All right. I got it. I got it. It's there. All right. All right, Judge. I'm going to go work on that right now. And then I will email that to you as soon as I get changed to your instructions. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Your Honor. Good work. Nine. Okay. <laughs>